The man accused of gunning down a pro-Trump supporter in Portland is now dead. Federal officials say agents shot and killed him while trying to make an arrest in Washington state. The suspect had said he is, quote, 100 percent Antifa and defended his actions during an interview that aired yesterday. What I will say is that I felt that my life and other people around me's lives were in danger. And I felt like I had no choice but to do what I did. That development coming as Portland nears 100 nights of protests and other big cities are bracing for the possibility of more violence this weekend, including in New York City and certainly others. Jesse, let's go to you first. Um, this is a man who is a father of two, and he had been protesting you know, all summer. I understand that he felt really committed to his cause, but he was making a choice, and the choice ended in his death. God rest his soul. I know he leaves behind two children, but my goodness, just do one Google search on this guy. It's, 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 I don't want to speak badly of the dead, but it, it's not a pretty picture. And to, to a certain extent, it's not only Wheeler's fault, who's a total failure out there in Portland. This guy was picked up on gun charges just a couple weeks ago. And he, they dropped the charges. They didn't even prosecute him. He would have been in jail. He wouldn't have been able to do this. To get on vice mm -hmm. while the, there's a fugitive task force looking to arrest you and try to plead your case shows how arrogant and emboldened Antifa has become. They think they can get away with that stuff. The video evidence and the eyewitness testimony tells a completely different story about that shooting. From everything we know, this was not an act of self-defense. He wasn't saving anyone's life. This looks like cold-blooded murder. He would have gone away for life if he hadn't been shot by deputies. And he was shot because he pulled out a rifle as they approached him. We warned this was going to happen. What did we say about Chop or Chaz? You let this thing go, someone's going to die, and they died. We've been saying for 100 days in Portland, someone's going to die, and now they're dead. And it's funny the way the media characterizes this. The media speaks nicely about the shooter and kind of denigrates the guy that was shot dead. They're calling this guy, labeling the dead guy like some right-wing Trump-supporting militia patriot member. And then they whitewash this guy who's about as radical as they come. It's sad. They're lying to you. And I think it's really going to backfire. Greg, what about the fact that a lot of these gun crimes basically don't get prosecuted? They let them go, and then it exacerbates the problem. Yeah, it's not just this guy. You know, he was busted and let go. Uh, this happens a lot in other cities with uh, handguns, especially. If they can't control the handguns in inner cities, how are they going to get have a national gun control plan is what I don't understand. Um, I applaud the feds for making the world safer by eliminating an armed murderous hooligan. I uh, The variables involved in his life, whether he was uh, a family man or involved in a cause, I don't care. I really don't care. I think the lesson every group mm. needs to learn is that you don't have to glorify a martyr because of their skin color. You, I am not going to call in sick over this guy because he's white. All right. He murdered a citizen. And, and Jesse's right. I've already seen certain kinds of language that are be, that are being employed to kind of paint, portray him as a uh, as a martyr because he believed in a cause. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, this started when the media deliberately mislabeled violence as protest, justified the actions of miscreants. Uh, we knew the violence was happening. We were told by people in the media that we were crazy. Even as the, the killings spiked, we have, I think we have now a 50 percent increase in murder in New York, which we mentioned yesterday. And we are told that we are just sensationalizing this. If people listen to us, there would be two men alive right now, that guy yeah. and the Trump supporter. Geraldo, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I, don't, uh, I don't miss him. I, I think Jesse's way too compassionate. This was a confessed killer. You live by the gun, you die by right. the gun. You pull a gun on a federal fugitive task force and you expect to survive. I mean, that's, uh, that shows, you know, they are so uh, living in their own bubble. 
Uh, you, you didn't want to blame Mayor Wheeler, but they've allowed for 100 days this anarchy, this disorder, this disruption, this violence, this mugging, this usurping of uh, private property, trashing everything, uh, you know, defying the rule of law, killing someone in cold blood at point-blank range. This is where you end up. This, this should have happened 50 days ago or 100 days ago. This was, uh, you know, yeah, 99 this bug, days ago. Uh, this, this Antifa thug is exactly what the president is complaining about. These people flying between cities, you know, bringing their, uh, you know, their violence with them, conspiring with others to disrupt, taking uh, naive, innocent protesters and bending them to their diabolical purpose. This, this guy was a terrorist, and he died a terrorist death. Dagan, let's get a final thought from you. The feds are on the case. Governor Kate Brown still refusing to call in the National Guard into Portland. The DA, Mike Schmidt of Multnomah County, not prosecuting many of those people arrested. But Attorney General Bill Barr said earlier this week that they he talked about radicals crossing state lines and carrying out planned coordinated attacks on law enforcement, public property, and on private property. Guess what? That means, and Andy McCarthy wrote about this, that the the Justice Department is going to be converting, looking at these federal crimes, converting state crimes into federal crimes, crossing state lines, coupled with kind of a loose criminal organization. That's a racketeering enterprise. So you're talking about the feds being in charge now. Yeah. We're talking about long sentences for these crimes to prevent murder, potentially. So sanctuary city no more.